Um, I don't know. I mean, I, frankly, uh, I think there's probably a lot of risk associated with Tesla. And if uh, the, a low risk situation is what an investor wants, I would recommend not investing in Tesla. Is demand or creation of demand an issue in your mind? Or do you, do you think no. if the car is good, if the car is workable, if it's affordable, it will be sold? Absolutely. Definitely. Yeah, no question. No doubt in your mind. Zero. How, how do you manage to dive so deeply into so many different engineering challenges? Well, I studied physics, and I certainly strongly recommend physics as a good grounding uh, to understand the nature of reality. Hey, I'm Steven, and this is Solving the Money Problem. If you're new, welcome. If you're not, welcome back. So in this video, I'm reacting to some clips of Elon Musk sharing some compelling insights into how Tesla innovates so fast, some of the risks they're willing to take along the way, whether or not Elon sees any issues with future demand for Tesla's products, and how incredibly important first principles atoms up thinking is not only to business, but also life in general. So let's get into the video. But first, hey guys, if you live in the US and you'd like to help out the channel and get up to four free stocks, check out the link in the description to Weeble. If you open a new account, you'll get two free stocks between $2.50 and $250 each just for opening an account. And if you deposit $100, you'll get a further two free stocks valued between $8 and $1,600 each. That is an obnoxiously good return on your investment. I mean, really, deposit $100 and you'll end up with, at minimum, $21 worth of stocks, a 21% ROI on your money. And if you're in Australia, the UK, or New Zealand, you can get a free stock with stake also using the link in the description. Let's get back to it. How, did, how do you manage to build so quickly? Well, it is, it, it is actually... Uh, quite difficult uh, to get all the permits, and um, it requires a lot of effort and a lot of uh, a close cooperation with the authorities. So uh, it may, I would definitely not say that it is easy to get the permits. It's not, not easy. Um, w one of the approaches that we did take was to proceed at risk with temporary permits. So there, there is a way to accelerate things in the system to go with temporary permits, but the risk is that the your long-term permit could be denied, in which case that you have to stop everything. And, and tear it down. Yes. So, <laughs> so most companies are not willing to take the risk of the temporary permit and then the risk of having to stop and tear down. Now, Elon, you're a CEO of a publicly traded company. Very really? valuable. Okay. <laughs> yes, of many publicly traded companies. Uh, how, how do you explain taking this risk to shareholders? Um, I don't know. I mean, I, frankly, uh, I think there's probably a lot of risk associated with Tesla. And if uh, the, a low risk situation is what an investor wants, I would recommend not investing in Tesla. What an incredibly insightful response from Elon, not only shedding some light onto how he thinks, but also the size of the kahunas with which he operates his companies, especially Tesla. Now, obviously, we know SpaceX had to blow up a few rockets before nailing reusability, but they're a privately held company. Tesla is a public company. In other words, any schmuck can own Tesla stock, and yet they're still taking these risks, something that I'm a big fan of. See, I believe that the way Elon Musk approaches these companies is looking at risks in terms of probabilities. I use the same style of probabilistic assessment of risks and whether or not they're worth taking in my own personal investment strategy. For example, if I believe that I have a 1 in 10 chance of getting a 100 times return on my money, I'll take that bet every day of the week. Most of the time, it's not going to work out. But on that 10th time, if I get a 100x return, I've more than recouped all of the prior losses. This is the same kind of mindset and philosophy that I believe Elon is approaching some of the business risks being taken with Tesla. Although generally speaking, I think that Tesla are taking far smaller, lower probability risks with a lower chance of a total disastrous outcome. The chance of not getting these final approvals is non-zero, but it's relatively small. Another example of Tesla's risk-taking would be the Tesla Cybertruck. Its unique design is going to require some innovation and some new ways to manufacture at scale, but this is a problem Tesla's willing to attempt to solve and tackle because should things pan out, which has a relatively high probability, this thing, the Cybertruck, is going to be incredibly fast, cheap, and efficient to produce and practically destroy everyone else attempting to compete in the pickup market. Another example of this would be Tesla's gigacasting machine. Never done before. No cars have ever been cast at such scale, but this is a risk Tesla's willing to take because if it works, again, it is a very high probability, but not an absolute certainty. This means manufacturing costs plummet, 
manufacturing speed explodes and once again Tesla accelerates further into an even more dominant position. Being willing to take these risks overall, sometimes things won't work out perfectly like we saw with production hell, but you improve and learn from these things and most of the time they do work out. The end result, Tesla is leaps and bounds ahead of everybody else and has an unassailable lead and are still pulling away faster and faster. I think the speed is um, a fundamental determinant of the competitiveness of any company. So especially with, when there's uh, technology involved. So the rate of innovation fundamentally determines which companies succeed, uh, you know, which, which companies are the number one in a, in a particular uh, arena. Uh, like unless, if, like if, if one company has twice the speed of innovation of another, uh, provided that company does not die of a self-inflicted wound or die sort of um, have infant mortality, the, the company with the, the high rate of innovation will unequivocally win long term. Many viewers of this channel mistakenly believe that I'm a Tesla fanboy because of the products. Like honestly, I don't actually give a fuck. I mean, I acknowledge that they're industry leading, they're amazing, rah rah rah. But that's not why I love the company. That's not why I'm invested in Tesla. The reason that I invested in this company is because I can see the incredible engineering which is leading to incredible innovation at an incredible unmatched pace. When Tesla began to ramp their first mass production vehicle, the Model 3, it was an absolute train wreck. They went through production hell, well documented, wasn't easy, wasn't fun, but caused the company to learn and adapt and innovate incredibly fast. And we've seen this progress translate into the Model Y, which is effectively version two of the Model 3, sharing three quarters of its parts in common. The Model Y introduced the octovalve and heat pump, which is an incredible innovation, absolutely blowing away, and to be honest, embarrassing the vast majority of automotive engineers who for the last 10, 20, 30, 50 years could have invented the same technology and didn't. Suddenly Tesla introduces this and manages to get about the same range out of the Model Y, which is about 10% more massive than the Model 3, just from this single innovation. Truly incredible. Not only that, but we also learn about the huge casting, which has replaced hundreds of parts and processes. And eventually the vehicle is going to have a rear casting and a front casting and Celta pack for the actual battery pack, producing a huge portion of the vehicle in just a few gigantic cast pieces. In the span of just three years, Tesla's manufacturing techniques have gone from worst in industry to best, and they're still getting better. In fact, their pace of innovation appears to be accelerating. Rip everyone else in the automotive industry. If Tesla already has a huge lead, and that lead is accelerating, and you don't have Tesla's engineers or leadership, good fucking luck. The vast majority of our engineering effort is in, is in manufacturing, basically designing the machine that makes the machine. So uh, I can't emphasize this enough. Uh, the, 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 the factory, especially an advanced factory, is the hard part. The vehicle design is comparatively easy. Um, so we will aim for a half million vehicles a year. That is our goal, to get there as quickly as possible. The only uh, limitation on growth is how quickly can we make, can we make cars that are uh, <coughs> high quality, high reliability. That's the only the governing element on the rate of uh, progress. Um, but nonetheless, even with extreme effort, I think it probably takes us until, this is just a guess, that until roughly the end of uh, 22 to reach uh, that uh, level of production. Well, rip my Tesla production estimates. I had them around 500,000 units of capacity out of Berlin end of 2023. And I thought I was a Tesla bull. It's demand or creation of demand an issue in your mind or do you do you think no. if the car's good if the car's workable if it's affordable it will be sold absolutely definitely yeah no question no doubt in your mind zero how come <laughs> be because creating demand is always a huge question on entrepreneurs mind but you seem totally confident that it will work absolutely uh, if you have a compelling product and the pri and it is affordable um, so, the, so the value for money is good the affordability you know, people can have enough money to buy it, um, and the product itself is compelling, then demand is never going to be an issue. This is such an amusing interaction to watch because I have had the exact same conversation nearly word for word countless times with people over the years, particularly since starting this YouTube channel, trying to explain there is no question about whether or not Tesla has demand. I mean, if you couldn't kind of deduce that from the fact they've sold every vehicle they've ever produced, or do a little bit of inference here and consider, well, hang on a minute. 
If Tesla keeps driving their costs down and then keeps passing those cost savings on to customers, that will automatically mean their vehicles are within the financial reach of a larger and larger customer base who will then be able to buy them. Because obviously, when you shop around and do the homework, you will discover, dollar for dollar, there is no better value vehicle than a Tesla, period. Now, that doesn't mean there aren't cheaper vehicles, but we're talking about value, not cost. And I just address cost because as I said, Tesla continues to innovate new manufacturing techniques and ways of producing their vehicles for less and passing those cost savings on to customers. Uh, that is not something I worry about. I do worry about making sure that we can uh, achieve affordability thresholds um, because even if you make uh, the value for money infinite, if people do not have enough money to buy it, they can't, still can't. It's, mm. uh, and it, then it's just frustrating for people. They see this great product, too expensive, can't buy it. So making the car affordable is... Um, and, and while continuing to improve the, the, the capabilities and quality of the product, is, is the, that is the hardest problem. How, how do you manage to dive so deeply into so many different engineering challenges? Well, I studied physics, and I certainly strongly recommend physics as a good grounding uh, to understand the nature of reality. I mean, physics is, is at, fundamentally just understanding how does the universe actually work. Um, and then uh, that's a good foundation for then a variety of uh, engineering disciplines. And I think uh, also the, the analytical principles, the, the, the sort of analytical constructs used in physics uh, apply to basically anything. Um, it's, you know, Phillips, physics developed all these ways of, of thinking like, like first principles thinking, uh, thinking about things in the limit of high and low, uh, you know, testing your hypothesis for, uh, you know, it's um, the scientific principle essentially. Uh, th these things are incredibly helpful in all arenas. So I have a confession to make. Physics was my first love and we're still in the midst of a heated, passionate romance. Richard Feynman was my first role model and still to this day the person I most look up to. I've always been interested in the way things work and fundamental truths. It's just intrinsic to who I am. Now I understand not everybody has this need, this desire and this urge to understand how things are from the atoms up and from the beginning of time. But let me tell you, for those of you who do have an interest in understanding the actual nature of reality, this understanding, this framework of physics thinking going from first principles will permeate every aspect of your life and help you to make much better decisions. It's just most people tend to think by analogy uh, or by comparison with something that already exists. And, and this, this is a sort of a mental shortcut that requires less uh, brain strain, uh, but it, it, it does not, it's hard to get f f uh, fundamental insights unless you think about things from a first principle standpoint. One highly relevant example of reasoning by analogy leading to reasonably poor outcomes is the people who mistakenly, erroneously, and foolishly looked at Tesla and thought, oh, they're an automotive manufacturer and nothing more because they make products that have four wheels. Therefore, they definitely are exactly the same as everything else that I've seen that looks similar, reason by analogy. Instead of reasoning by first principles and thinking, well, hang on a minute, Huh, it does have four wheels, but the entire drivetrain's different. It doesn't have an internal combustion engine, but a battery. And those battery costs are steadily and predictably declining over time. Hang on a minute, the second most expensive component inside the things that this company makes are actually the computer. And computers are exponentially improving and exponentially decreasing in cost. Hang on a minute, the company, the track record, the execution, the culture, the leadership, this is not the same. This is what happens when you reason up from first principles rather than reasoning down by analogy. It's intellectually lazy to reason by analogy. Sometimes it can be semi-useful. But the truth is, if you really want to get to the fundamental facts of the matter, you must reason with first principles, bottom-up thinking. This is why so many analysts were completely dead fucking wrong on Tesla and so many retail stock investors out in the marketplace and the vast majority of the mainstream finance media because they took the intellectually lazy path of reasoning by analogy instead of first principles. This is also why I was so incredibly confident, despite Tesla stock going sideways for about five years to be investing every spare cent that I had in the company, because I knew what was going on. I understood, no, they're not like all of these other automakers. They're a completely different beast. This will become more apparent to even the daftest of people over time. And sure enough, this is exactly what we've seen happen in the last 12 months. Everyone, finally, who universally assumed Tesla was just an automotive manufacturer has now started to realize, oh no, they are definitely not just an automotive manufacturer. And the first principle standpoint is 
is kind of deductive thinking that almost has like yeah. the force of a natural law, of a physical yeah. law of making things happen because they need to happen? Uh, mm -hmm. No, first, I mean, first principles thinking is just saying, okay, what are the most fundamental truths that we know about any given situation? Like the things that at a very granular level, the most, the sort of simplest building blocks um, that, that we're most convinced are true. And then, um, and then you reason up from those fundamental uh, axioms. Uh, and then you, it's just sort of cogent thinking would be another way to, to, to refer to it as, uh, say like, are these axioms uh, believed to be, high, you know, the, the most believed to be true? Are they the most relevant? Do they necessarily lead to a conclusion? Uh, what is the probability associated with that conclusion? Uh, the things that, because reality is really probability. It's not, it's not deterministic. It's not w one or the other. When did you have the personal epiphany understanding that this rule that comes from physics applies to the business world? I think it applies to everything, but um, I don't know, I think probably 95 or 94, something like that. While swimming, while jogging, <laughs> under the shower, <laughs> when did it hit you? Oh, well, I took 400 micrograms of LSD and about two and a half hours into the trip, I said, oh, hang on a minute, I'm not Elon Musk. By the way, guys, if you haven't already seen the very first video I posted on this channel, now would be a wonderful time to click the card in the corner and watch Elon Musk's psychedelic secret. Let's continue. Was it a process or a moment? I, was, I don't know, I was thinking about uh, the, the internet and um, this is the early days and like what is the internet fundamentally? <laughs> Uh, you know, it's not, it's, not, it's not like a place you get email or post pictures or something. Really, the internet uh, is um, like the nervous system for humanity. Uh, whereas previously, uh, communication was more like osmosis. Uh, in order for s s uh, information to travel, somebody would have to call someone with a phone or write them a letter. And then that letter would be carried by another person to, you know, by a series of people to your de to the destination. Um, now, uh, communication can, ha can happen instantly from any place in the world to any anyone else and does not need a human to carry it. Uh, this, is, this is sort of like, you know, at a cellular level, you see, uh, say, a small a primitive um, multicellular creature will just communicate via from, by osmosis from one cell to the, to the next, or diffusion, essentially. So, um, but when, once you have a more sophisticated organism, you have a nervous system. Um, the, the, the speed at which information can travel is much faster, and the accessibility of information is fundamentally different. <clears throat> you know, if you want, now with the internet, you could be, uh, you know, in the middle of the Amazon jungle with the internet, with a satellite connection, and you have access to all the world's information. And for those of you who haven't fully understood the implications of Starlink, you're now starting to get some insight. As somebody who was in the Amazon jungle around two years ago and experienced the severe lack of internet connectivity, I can completely understand. Just imagine having access to the world's information anywhere on planet Earth, in the depths of the jungles, in mountain villages, in isolated desert communities, and everywhere in between. This is going to be an absolute game changer. Access to information is the solution to just about every problem we face. Whereas previously, even if you lived in the Library of Congress in the US, where the most books are, you still would only have access to a fraction of the world's information. This is, this is basically humanity becoming a superorganism uh, to the degree that's not possible um, unless you have uh, sort of essentially instant light, light speed communication from anywhere to anywhere, as opposed to osmosis, diffusion. Thus, humanity transforming into something like a bioorganism, or at least behaving to More the so, same rules. Like, like w the, the speed of information flow and, and just, in fact, even not just speed, but qualitatively, the access to information was so limited before. I mean, now, technically, you, you could teach yourself anything. Previously, say, universities had somewhat of a monopoly on uh, higher education. But now, MIT has all of the lectures online. You can buy all of the textbooks. You can, you can do the tests online. Uh, you can learn anything you want. Almost, I, I, I'm not sure what you couldn't learn on, online. Um, but you can learn right now online for free more than someone who did a doctorate could do before. Mm. This is coming from a man, Elon Musk, who taught himself how to build rockets reading books. 
not actually joking. Each of us has better access to information than the President of the United States did just a few decades ago. It really is an incredible time to be alive and I'm so grateful to be able to experience not only this huge explosion in access to information and technology, but also to witness this generational company, Tesla, disrupting and innovating at a pace never before seen. I'm Stephen Mark Ryan, this is Solving the Money Problem, and I love you all. And don't forget, if you live in the US and you'd like to help out the channel and get up to four free stocks, check out the link in the description to Webull. If you open a new account, you'll get two free stocks between $2.50 and $250 each just for opening an account. And if you deposit $100, you'll get a further two free stocks valued between $8 and $1,600 each. And if you're in Australia, the UK or New Zealand, you can get a free stock with stake also using the link in the description. Thanks so much for watching. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And of course, if you have any ideas for future videos, let me know. I read all your comments. P.S. If you're still watching, you're awesome. If you'd like early access, exclusive videos, regular Q&As, our private Discord server and more, consider supporting the channel at patreon.com slash solving the money problem so I can keep creating content for you guys. There's a link in the description. You can now also become a member of the channel for some exclusive perks. To learn more, click the join button next to subscribe and don't forget to check out our merch store. Either way, the best form of support is you being here and watching so thanks again.